my fellow brothers and sisters, peace be with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are going to uh, continue our study of the book of Isaiah using my own personal translation. Uh, a Nomad of Deseret, the book of Isaiah, um, which you can get a copy of in the link in the description below. And uh, there's some other good stuff in the description of this video below. Now, uh, today we're going to cover the uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 14, starting in verse 16. And uh, I hope to, to go all the way to verse 27. Uh, this is a continuation of what we, we have been talking about. And uh, we have been seeing that the, the king of Babylon, which is also a metaphor for... Uh, Lucifer is uh, he's trying to put himself above God now um, I, I, I notice something and I, I, I want to point it out because I um, I made a couple mistakes I just realized it today and so I want to, to point that out. It is, of course, embarrassing. But um, in the footnotes of uh, chapter 14, uh, not the footnotes, the, the chapter heading, I put the, the stuff about the king of Assyria. I should put it about king of Babylon. And so I apologize for that. This is my first time doing a book, and I had no help on it. And no matter how many times I read it, I, I could not find all the, the mistakes. I, I fixed a lot of stuff, but I'm, uh, I, every once in a while I feel, still find something stupid like that. And also another uh, mistake in uh, the footnotes of, this is number 102 of the footnotes on page 42. Uh, I give a reference to the Doctrine and Covenants. I uh, put in there 76, 43 to 39. That is obviously incorrect. It's supposed to be 43 to 49. So again, that's, that's my fault and I apologize about that. Um, in, in, a, in a future version, I will update all this, but I know that doesn't help anybody that already got it but uh, uh, so far the, my book of Genesis is going much better and I actually have some help on that and uh, people helping to double check my work so uh, I hope that that happens less often in the future so uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, feel free to follow along in the King James Version or the Book of Mormon uh, if you uh, uh, feel so inspired to do. So uh, let's go ahead and start in verse 16. Uh, in referring to the, the King of Babylon, who is also a metaphor for Satan, says, uh, They that see thee, this is, this is referring to after... Uh, he is uh, brought down to Sheol in verse 15. It says, uh, They that see thee shall stare at thee, considering thee, and shall say, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed its cities, and opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the Gentiles, yea, all of them, lie in glory, Every one in his own house. So uh, let's let's pause right there. So uh, basically, everyone in Sheol. Remember that Sheol is a Hebrew word that means place of the dead. Uh, we often translate it as hell, but when we use the word hell, we think of a place of punishment. Uh, that, that's not very accurate in the Hebrew. Uh, in the, 
in the Hebrew, this word means place of the dead. That means both the the righteous and the wicked go into Sheol, but the the wicked go there for punishment. The the, the righteous go there in in a uh, in peace as they await for the time of their resurrection. And uh, the, the king of Babylon, who represents uh, Lucifer, uh, goes down into Sheol, and um, everyone kind of looks at him and, and realizes, is this the guy that, that did all this bad stuff? Look at him, he's nothing now. Um, an, another thing that I want to point out here uh, it says it made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities and opened not the house of his prisoners so um, this is another uh, phrase that uh, makes me wonder if, if this is really talking about some future person uh, who rep is actually like over spiritual Babylon in our day uh, because it's a uh, because it's it talks about the uh, making the world a wilderness and destroying its cities uh, we know in our day there is a plan to uh, return uh, most of of, of land uh, into uh, wilderness, and uh, they want to crowd everybody into some remaining cities. And that would leave all the other uh, uh, cities desolate. Um, and. Um, and the, it, it's it's also true that the the uh, the Babylonians did they they did go out and destroy cities and uh, we we could also say that it's talking only about the world as in the limited area at that that time but um, the 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 more I read this I see this more in futurity rather than in the past. But it can certainly represent the past and also futurity at the at the same time if we are considering that the king of Babylon in the past is rep also represents the the Babylonian system in the future. This is, uh, all the kings of the Gentiles, they all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. Um, this phrase house here is probably in intended to mean a tomb and so uh, the, the kings of the Gentiles uh, they they lie in the in the glory or the the sepulchers of their own tombs uh, but concerning the, the the king of Babylon it says but thou art cast away from thy sepulchre like an abominable branch. And the remnant of those that are slain thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden underfoot. And so uh, this is referring to the, the king of Babylon um, not being put in the sepulchre of, of his choosing. And it says an abominable branch. Uh, the word branch here can also be translated as shoot or sprout. And it's another way of talking about descendants in the Hebrew. And so uh, this, uh, th this king of Babylon is, is, is cast away uh, from, uh, from his sepulcher like an abominable branch or uh, like basically that could be saying someone like cast out of the family 
And so they're not allowed to be buried in the family tomb or graveyard or something like that. Um, it says that thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast ruined thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be named forever. So, um, the reason why uh, the, the king of Babylon is, is cast out is because uh, he ruined his land and he slain his own people. And, um, and then the, uh, the, the saying goes, the seed of evildoers shall, shall never be named forever. And so, um, again, did, did the, 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 the king of, of Babylon pass? Did he ruin his land? Did he slay his own people? Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, I wonder if I could look that up really quick. But um, one thing I do know is that the uh, Babylon of our day, they are trying to kill the people of their own nations. And uh, they are ruining their own lands. And you can definitely see that in the United States. Just from a, a quick glance here, uh, the, the, the common understanding is that uh, because of the king's own wickedness, it, um, was, um, it brought about the judgment of God, and, and, and that's how they interpret it as uh, ruining the land and slaying the people. Um, and uh, certainly the, uh, the, the, the Babylon of past did have a tyrannical government. And uh, we see that in the, in, in the scriptures. And, uh, but, uh, so I, I guess we, we, we could say that, but, uh, what, what I, I really want to focus on here says the seed of evildoers shall never be named forever. And, um, I, again, I, 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 I see this as, as, as being in futurity or at, at least I see the future futurity aspect of it because like I like I keep saying I'm not hundred percent sure that this is referring to just Babylon of old days or if it's referring only to futurity or or both I certainly see the futurity aspect of it um, but um The, uh, the seed of evildoers shall uh, never be named. Uh, we, in, 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 in our own spiritual Babylon, we have these very evil family lineages. And those are the seed of evildoers. And those people are going to be cast out of the earth uh, when the Lord is ready to do so. 
and um, they uh, will never again be allowed to step foot on this earth. Neither will their, will their children be allowed to do so uh, because of how wicked they've been. And so these people are going to be forgotten and, and they're not going to be named forever on this earth. Um, we, we, we still know the names of the, of the king of Babylon. Uh, they are not forgotten of, of the old days. Uh, and uh, this is and and um, this is what the, the Lord is going to do to Babylon. Whether it is referring to the the, the past or, or future, he says, uh, "Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquities of their fathers, so that they do not rise up and possess the earth and fill the face of the world with cities." So the, the, the Lord is going to destroy the children of the evildoers because of the iniquities of their fathers. Uh, in, uh, in, in this verse, verse 21, uh, you'll notice in the King James Version it says, uh, for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. The, the Joseph Smith translation corrects it to being in the plural, so it says iniquities of their fathers. Uh, this change also occurs in the Greek Septuagint, showing that the Greek Septuagint is closer to the original manuscripts of Isaiah at this, uh, in this point of, uh, of concepts here. And, um, um, Moving on, the, 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 the Lord is preparing slaughter for the children of the, of the wicked um, so that they do not rise up. Now, this rise up is, is uh, not referring to uh, resurrection because all people will be resurrected uh, in uh, due time. But it's referring to uh, rising up again as in multitudes of numbers and children um, and this so that they do not possess the earth and fill the face of the world with cities so the, the, the Lord wants to destroy this uh, wicked uh, wickedness out from among the people and it says for I will rise up against them declareth the Lord of Sabaoth and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and offspring and posterity, declareth the Lord. So again, another reason why I, uh, I, 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 I see this mostly in futurity is that um, uh, though, though Babylon was attacked and was overcome by Persia, uh, it was they, they 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 didn't cut off entirely. It was um, a, not like a complete destruction, and uh, they they did not cut off the name, remnant, and offspring and posterity of Babylon. It just kind of merged with with Persia, or what we call Persia. Uh, that's not his actual name, but um, and then it goes on to to say this again. It says, "I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction," declareth the Lord of Sabaoth. So. Uh, we saw this in, a, in an earlier statement uh, back in the end of chapter 13 uh, where the Lord will make uh, Babylon desolate and uninhabited by people forever. 
this is the the same concept which again shows me that this probably isn't talking about Babylon of old days but is referring to spiritual Babylon of, of futurity uh, a besom of destruction it's a type of broom it's a broom made out of twigs so it's not just like a regular old broom it's 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 a it's a very specific broom that it's not designed like to sweep up dust it's designed to sweep away debris and so the the, the Lord is going to to uh, to, to bring back utter destruction upon uh, Babylon and uh, it shall and uh, and it shall never be inhabited again except by animals uh, which again that that did not happen to Babylon of old days but it could happen to Babylon of future days the Lord of Sabaoth hath sworn saying surely as I have thought so shall it come to pass and as I have devised so shall it stand. And so, uh, the, 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 the Lord is now saying that he has sworn something and he thought of it and he's go and uh, it shall come to pass and he devised it, he, he uh, planned it out and so it's going to come to pass. And this is what he has planned. He says, To crush Assyria in my land and upon my mountains, I will tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the plan that is sealed upon the whole earth. This is the hand that is stretched out upon all the Gentiles. For the Lord of Sabaoth hath devised, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? So there's there's basically two plans in that statement. The first plan is talking about Assyria in in the old days. Uh, this is Assyria, uh, which uh, destroyed the upper kingdom of Israel and carried away the, the ten tribes. Um, the Lord has a plan to destroy Assyria and to, uh, to, to break the yoke from off them and from off their shoulders. That is obviously referring to, um, well, most likely it's, re it's referring to the, the ten tribes. Uh, which uh, departed from Assyria and went into the lands of the north. And uh, then um, it, could, it might also be referring to uh, Judah because Assyria invaded uh, Judah and then had like a really bad loss and, and that was the end. So maybe this talking about uh, delivering Judah from um, Assyria, but um, the the yoke that was put upon Judah was very very light because Assyria never over overcame uh, Judah, but they did overcome uh, the kingdom of Ephraim, Israel, and uh, and and, and uh, removed them and put them under burden. So maybe it is talking about uh, Israel, I don't know. But uh, the, the, the point is, is that whatever it is, the Lord has a plan to destroy uh, Assyria so that uh, Israel can be delivered, whether it be the upper kingdom or the lower kingdom. But then the Lord says, this is the plan that is sealed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the Gentiles. So, this is, is twofold. It's not only going to be upon a 
Assyria, it's also going to be upon the whole earth and upon all the Gentiles. And so this statement is, is clearly referring to the Babylon of futurity, um, which is among us, over us now. And so uh, the Lord is going to basically uh, tread upon the whole earth and and uh, and des and destroy uh, and des and des destroy the the, the people. Um, not not in entirely. He's, he's uh, but he, he it will be a, a major destruction, uh, especially among the first worlds. Uh, and. Um, because uh, these nations had more access to truth than the other ones, and they rejected it. And so the, the Lord is going to smite, uh, strip, stretch his hand out upon all the Gentiles. And then this vision closes by saying, For the Lord of Sabaoth hath devised, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who, sh and who shall turn it back? So the, the Lord has planned all this this out already, and it's going to be done. And and no one can can turn it back. Now you'll notice that the chapter is not done because there's still verse 28 through 32. But this is a separate vision, and so we're going to stop there. Uh, we conclude the the vision now that started in chapter 13. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll finish off this, this next vision uh, next time. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.